Hey guys, good morning once again. Uh, it's it's a uh, it's awesome to see you all. Uh, hope you all are doing well. I hope you had a good vacation break. <laughs> this view never gets old, you know. So this uh, this <laughs> it's uh, yeah, well, lovely, lovely. Um, I hope your family and friends are all doing well. Uh, I missed you guys too. Uh, but so this course is all about what. Ministering divine healing, right? It's all about healing and deliverance and uh, something practical um, and something very important for our ministry, uh, you know, and how we go about and what Jesus has asked us to do, basically. So that's what this course is all about. Yeah. Um, so just to make sure, is everybody present in class? So this is the strength. Okay, Sean. Sure. Okay. All right. Great. Um, okay. So Pray and we'll get started, shall we? Yeah. Father, we come before you right now. Jesus, we are thankful. We are grateful for your mercies, Lord. Your word says that your mercies are new every morning. I was thankful we are, Father. Thank you for your grace that is sufficient. Thank you for your love that sustains us. And so, Father, right now, even as a class, we, we reach out to you and ask for you to pour out your wisdom over us, Jesus. As your word says in James chapter 1, verse 5, God, anyone who asks you of wisdom, Father, you give without holding back, beyond measure, Father. And so, as a class, Father, we don't want to lean on our own understanding, on our intellect. Father, we want to rely and depend on your wisdom because... Once again, your word says, you are the spirit of wisdom. So come and rest on us, Holy Spirit. Uh, speak through me. I surrender my tongue, my knowledge, my intellect for, to you, God. I, in everything, we give you glory and honor. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Awesome. Uh, hi, Karen. Good to see you. Happy New Year to you, too. Okay. So uh, one of the things uh, for those online, I've already shared the PDF of Ministering Divine Healing. Um, and for those of you here, uh, please make sure you get a copy of this book called uh, Ministering Divine Healing, okay? Uh, if, if you haven't gotten it yet, um, we'll make sure that you get it, okay? Um, but until then, I can also share the soft copy with you once this hour is done, okay? Um, yeah, but until then, just follow along with me. Um, so uh, we're going to talk about uh, ministering healing and uh, you know uh, deliverance, as we all mentioned. So why is this important? Is simply because this is how Jesus went about doing his ministry, right? And everything that he did, right? He preached the gospel. He preached the good news. But having doing that, he was also he was also healing people. You sure, Jesus healed people. You think so? Okay, we'll divide the class. We'll have a debate about it. Yeah. Uh, so that's what Jesus did, and we're going to be reading a lot of scriptures. And so I would encourage you to just keep that in handy. But this is what he did in everything that Jesus did. Right? He preached. He he preached in the synagogues. He taught about the kingdom of God. At the same time, he healed people. Right? And we're going to read a lot of scriptures about it. And I'm sure that's going to encourage us to uh, you know, just have that, uh, that kind of a compassion or interest in ministry for people uh, to see them uh, you know, set free and whatnot. Okay? So that's the first thing, uh, is that we are going to learn to do evangelism the Jesus way. Okay? We are going to learn to do evangelism Jesus way, right? And how he did. Okay. And the second point is every believer can do this. That is the second point, right? Every believer can do this. Every single person in this room can do this, right? Everyone who's online, right? This is what the scripture, I'm, I'm not saying this, the Bible says that, okay? That every believer can minister in divine healing and deliverance. Okay, that means you, 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 all of you. Amen? Isn't that awesome? Right? Uh, it's, and we'll touch about this in a more elaborate way in, in the chapters to come, but 
um the healing ministry uh, uh you know sometimes we we don't approach it because we think okay it's only for a certain few people like we don't you know uh, but uh i can tell you that i have used this sentence saying i will pray for you so much from 2020 to 2021 right because we all went through the pandemic isn't it and so many of our friends and and our loved ones were were you know were, were uh, struck with covid and we i kept saying is like hey we'll pray for you we'll pray for your family we'll pray for you we'll pray for your healing isn't it um and so uh it's that means it's simply to point out to say that every believer can do this has to do this right say i can do this say i can do this one more time Okay, now turn to the person next to you and say, you can do this. Vimal is like, yeah, 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 absolutely. <laughs> I don't care if you can do this, but I'm going to do it. Huh, <laughs> Vimal? You can do this, right? So learning to do evangelism the Jesus way, that's one. And then every believer can do this is kind of, uh, the fundamental of what this course is all about, right? Um, and and another point to keep this in mind is, uh, as we learn about healing and deliverance and whatnot, healing and deliverance is not in the method or a process. Okay, healing and deliverance is not in a method or process what do i mean by that okay only if i keep my hand on you and pray for you you will be healed that's a method isn't it or if i throw my kerchief on you you'll be healed all of that is a method isn't it right so your healing or ministering healing and deliverance is not based on a method or a process but it is from the person of jesus christ Right, it is he is the healer. He is the one who heals. I am not going to put Jesus in a box and say, "Okay, this is how Jesus functions. This is how Jesus heals." Sanjay, are you are you with me? Right. So healing and deliverance is not a particular process, but it is in the person of Jesus Christ. Did everybody get that? Okay, it's a core foundation. This is where a lot of us can go wrong. Okay, thinking, okay, it's in the it's in the method and not in the person of Jesus. Okay, so that's the core fundamental. Okay. Um, is healing and deliverance important? Is miracles, healing and deliverance, is it important? Okay, guys, online, what do you think? Karen, Nina, do you think? Miracle uh, healings and deliverance is that important? Why is it important? You know the next question was going to be why, you know? By now you should be used to me. <laughs> why is it important? Okay, see, here's the thing. We're going to use a few words like new birth, healing, deliverance, supernatural, signs and wonders. Okay, did I go too fast? Healing, deliverance, signs and wonders, new birth. Uh, all of this simply means ministering, uh, healing and deliverance. Okay. Um, so why is it important? It's a sign. It's a sign to unbeliever. Okay. Why is it important? You understood my question, right? Why is ministering, or why is miracles, healing, and deliverance, why is it important? That's what Jesus told us to do. Okay. Okay. Jachin says, it shows compassion of God to others. Yep. It shows the power of God. Okay. Uh, sorry, Nina. Okay. So Jesus is living God. What he did, we are also called to do. Okay. But why is it important? Okay. So now we are living in a day and age 
uh, where there's a huge advancement in a medical field, isn't it? Like science and technology is advanced, uh, isn't it? Um, and so in a day and age like that, um, when someone says, OK, miracle, science, and wonders, why is it important? Don't we have this thing? What would you say? Yeah, we have the X-ray machine. We have the this machine. We have that machine. Why do we need to know? Sorry. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So science and technology ha has advanced, but it does not know everything, right? It, it can't. It can't explain a lot of things still, isn't it? And I'm sure it, it won't in 100 years from now as well, isn't it? And there still there are people. I mean, if, if science and technology could answer everything, uh, I mean, we are grateful for them, isn't it? We are grateful for our doctors. We are grateful for our frontline supporters who helped us in, you know, during the pandemic and whatnot. So we, you know, we must be very grateful and thankful to all of them. But having said that, uh, there are still people who are hurting, right? Uh, and there are still people who need to experience that raw touch of Jesus. Isn't it? Yes or no? Right? And so that's basically the reason why miracles, healings, and deliverance are important. Um, Jackman also saying, uh, total healing comes from God. Amen. Yeah. Uh, Jesus is our divine healer. What man cannot do, he can do it in and through us. Yes. Right, where man ends, God begins. Amen. Right, so uh, let's look at a few uh, biblical reasons why we must minister supernatural healing and deliverance. Okay, we are going to look at some biblical reasons as to why we must minister in uh, in supernatural healing and deliverance. There are going to be eight reasons. Okay, uh, the first reason is. Miracles, healing, and deliverance reveal the reality and nature of God. Okay? The first reason why it's important is healing, miracles, and deliverance, they reveal the nature of God. Okay? Uh, reveal means what? To show, right? Reveal or revelation. A revelation comes from the word reveal. Or another word for revelation is unveil, right? So, you know, you, we see, uh, we sometimes wear this. I mean, some, some women wear the shawl and they cover their faces and all, right? So what's that? They're covering their face with a veil, isn't it? And when they remove it, what is it called? Unveiling. Unveiling is another word for revealing. Reveal, a revelation, right? So when we minister, when you... And I minister in healing and deliverance. What we are doing, or what is happening, is that there is a revelation of who this God is. It's revealing the nature of God. What is it saying? It's saying, hey, there is a God who wants to see you well, who wants to see you whole, isn't it? So let's um, look at Exodus chapter 15, verse 26. Okay, you can turn in your Bibles, in your iPhones, on your Androids. <laughs> Exodus chapter 15, verse 26. Okay, I said the phones because you can navigate because we're going to read a lot of scriptures, guys. <laughs> you guys doing okay? Yes? Okay, it's too early to ask that question. Just five minutes into the class. <laughs> Okay, Exodus chapter 15, verse 26. It says, If you diligently heed the voice of the Lord your God and do what is right in his sight, give ear to his commandments and keep all his statutes, I will put none of the disease on you which I have brought on the Egyptians, for I am the Lord who heals you. I am the Lord who heals you. Okay, so right there is like a covenant name right there jehovah rafa right he is a healer right um and another scripture i'll just read it for us yeah, don't worry about it um exodus chapter 23 verse 25 and 26 
Exodus 23, verse 25 and 26, it says, So you shall serve the Lord your God, and he will bless your bread and your water, and I will take sickness away from the midst of you. Okay, I am in Exodus chapter 23, verse 25 and 26. Verse 26, it says, No one shall suffer miscarriage or be barren in your land. I will fulfill the number of your days. I will fulfill the number of your days. Okay, guys, just think about it. Okay, it's we read Exodus. I hope you've read the book of Exodus. We know the story of Exodus. Um, they were living in a supernatural culture, if you have to say, right? In times of signs and wonders. Like they saw rock splitting and water coming from it, bitter waters being uh, changed to sweet waters, Red Sea being parted, right? Uh, bread coming from heaven, um, quail coming and falling down, right? Uh, and then there's just so much more, isn't it? Um, and through that entire period, imagine a people say three million, that's just men. It could be over six million and above, isn't it? And none of them ha had sickness. And how God sustained them. Right? And so what is it, what is it again doing? Is it's, it's just revealing the nature of God. And then he's saying, okay, he's a healer. He wants his children to be the way he designed originally. Right? Uh, another beautiful verse uh, from Psalm. Can someone read Psalm 103, uh, verse 3? Psalm 103, verse 3, I think. Thank you. Right, so who forgives all your iniquities and, and heals all your diseases? Amen? Uh, so yeah, uh, it's, it's revealing the nature of God that He wants to heal. Uh, and this is one point you will be hearing time after time after time after time again, okay? That he is a God who heals. He wants to heal. And hence, he wants you to uh, minister. Okay, uh, let's move on um, to the second point. Okay, so what's the first point again? Miracles, healings, it reveals the nature of God, okay? Second, it reveals God's greatness. Okay, the second point, it reveal, miracles reveal God's greatness. Okay, and John chapter 2, verse 11. Let's read John chapter 2. I'll read it for us. You can just make a note of it. John chapter 2, verse 11. This beginning of signs Jesus did in Cana of Galilee and manifested his glory. And his disciples believed in him. Okay? Manifested means it's an expression. Right? He manifested his glory. And then his disciples believed in him. Okay? So the second point is very simple. Miracles reveal God's greatness. Okay? And the third point. Miracles demonstrate God's compassion. Okay, miracles demonstrate God's compassion, right? Um, in Psalm 145, verse 8 and 9, Psalm 145, verse 8 and 9, it says, The Lord is gracious and full of compassion. Okay, you can turn to it if you want to, but it's Psalm 145, verse 8 and 9. It's so beautiful. It says, the Lord is gracious. Okay, another, another translation says, graceful. Graceful, right? Um, anytime you see this word, we've spoken about this. If it ends with full, I say graceful, that means he is full of grace, right? When we say he is wonderful, it means he is full of wonder, right? When you say he is, full, is beautiful, he is full of beauty. Amen. When we say he is merciful, he is full of mercy. Right? And so here it says, God is gracious, is graceful, and full of compassion. 
there's no word called compassion full. So that's why it explains full of compassion. Uh, slow to anger and great in mercy. The Lord is good to some. The Lord is good only to Bible college students. The Lord is good to those who don't sleep in class. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I had to say that, guys. Uh, my apologies. <laughs> You see, now everyone's awake, huh? Yes. <laughs> <clears throat> oh gosh, I forgot to get my water bottle. Okay. The Lord is good to everybody say all, guys. The Lord is good to all. Okay. And his tender mercies are over all his works. Right? That's um beautiful. Can everybody say amen? Amen. Amen. Our God is so good, isn't he? Right? Um, and time and time again in the Gospels, we see that every time Jesus went on about his ministry, we use this, we see this word called compassion, right? Let's go to Matthew chapter 14, verse 14. Matthew 14, 14. Easy to remember, right? Matthew 14, 14. Okay, and with another finger, go uh, you know keep that page and go to Matthew fifteen verse thirty two, and then with another finger, go to Matthew chapter twenty verse thirty four. Okay, so Matthew fourteen fourteen, Matthew fifteen thirty two, Matthew fifteen thirty two, and then Matthew chapter twenty verse thirty four. Okay, and there's more, but yeah, all right. Matthew 14, 14, it says, And when Jesus went out, he saw a great multitude, and he was moved with compassion for them, and healed their sick. Okay, one of the things that I found interesting when reading through the Gospels, okay, uh, it might be different in your Bibles, but I don't see Jesus praying for the sick. He only heals the sick. And even when Jesus commanded us to okay, heal the sick, he didn't say pray for the sick. So what I'm trying to say is there is a place of power and authority that Jesus moved, and Jesus is calling us. He's like, hey, there is a place in me where you don't have to pray for the sick anymore. You will only have to heal them. And it is in that power and authority Jesus functioned. Are you with me? Right, and so okay, here we see that he was moved with compassion. And Matthew fifteen thirty two, it says, "Now Jesus called his disciples to himself and said, I have compassion on the multitude, because they have now continued with me three days and have nothing to eat.'" Okay, next uh, another chapter, Matthew twenty verse thirty four. So Jesus had compassion and touched their eyes okay some more uh, now I'm you can just write this down M M mark chapter 1 was 41 mark chapter 1 was 41 it says then Jesus moved with compassion he stretched out his hand and touched him and said to him I am willing be cleansed I am willing be cleansed that's mark chapter 1 verse 41 jesus was moved with compassion mark chapter 5 verse 19 mark chapter 5 verse 19 says jesus did not permit him but said to him go home to your friends and tell them what great things the lord has done for you and how he has had compassion on you Okay, um, another scripture, this is just for you to read. Luke chapter 7, verse 13 to 15. Luke chapter 7, verse 13 to 15. Okay, that's for you to read. So let's just pause here for a second, okay? So the foundation, uh, you know, of what we should be doing is, is our hearts need to be filled with compassion for, for the lost, for the sick, amen, uh, for the oppressed. And uh, it's... We should never function or we should never go in, 
you know and want to uh, minister healing and deliverance to make a name for ourselves right uh, okay let them know that i am the preacher let me go ahead and do that right and that's such an uh, uh, a very sick motive or an intention to have isn't it uh, your heart should be moved with compassion and you need to ask yourself am i moving am i ministering out of compassion for this people whoever it is wherever god may place you after you graduate and go from here right it could be to your own cities to your homelands wherever and i think this is a beautiful question to ask yourself it's like a heart check right uh, like we have all these tests nowadays right that liver check cholesterol check full body checkup 999 rupees right it it checks our sugar level bp level and all of that one of the questions that will check your heart and which will keep it in the right track is uh, am i moving out of compassion am i doing this out of my love for him or not what he can do for me right it's a beautiful question to ask yourself and it keeps your heart in the right alignment amen are you guys with me right so the third point why miracles healing and deliverance is important is because it displays god's compassion are you with me guys okay fourth one um, miracles they have a powerful effect on people right especially on those who do not believe okay miracles have a powerful effect on people especially on those who do not believe okay miracles gets people's attention okay miracles get people's attention it's i mean this is not a very, very good example but it's uh, i think it happens in india or in bangalore at least and there's an accident or somewhere you see it's like everybody stops you know as like what happened what happened you know there's like, like like a mob that you know it's like what happened <laughs> uh so it, it it grabs it there was a noise there was something and then it got everybody's attention and everybody wants to go see what happened and we see that in the life of jesus isn't it so he heals someone without a poster being stuck on every wall saying okay the festival of healing or no pr team okay no major flex banners no fancy sound systems people followed him into the wilderness into the into the unknown and what not why because it got their attention right they wanted to go see what is he all about amen right so miracles get people's attention um you can get attention of the good people it got the attention of the bad people also but it get people's attention that's the point okay uh the sub point there is miracles they act as a signpost to god okay it's a very important point guys it's very these are all very simple basic elementary level points but it's just so fundamental to our ministry uh, in healing right miracles are a signpost what's a signpost shows direction okay bangalore to hyderabad 350 kilometers more go this way straight or take left isn't it that's a signpost yeah you're going on a highway okay your favorite restaurant is 30 kilometers away nobody stops at that signpost post and says like wow what a beautiful biryani you <laughs> know it's just a signpost isn't it if someone does that then then something is uh... a <laughs> something is uh, not right nobody stops at a signpost and says i have arrived isn't it yes or no we don't stop you guys understand what i'm saying right we don't stop at a signpost that says okay 500 kilometers to pune i am at pune we don't say that yeah so that's what miracles are miracles are a signpost that points to jesus amen uh this Moses prays a most beautiful prayer in Exodus chapter 33. Uh, it says, If I have found favor in your eyes, 
show me your ways okay if i have found favor in your eyes show me your ways that i may know you are you with me so moses prayed that and in psalm 103 somewhere i, I forget the exact verse it says god showed his acts his actions his deeds to the people of israel but he showed his ways to moses it's there in psalm 103 somewhere okay uh, uh, yeah it says god showed in other words god revealed his deeds his actions his miracles what are the miracles like what we just discussed right he split the rock water came bread came from heaven quail came from heaven right everything so all of those are actions deeds so the psalmist says god showed his miracles to the people of israel but he showed his ways to moses so that means there is something more to this god than the miracles that he does but miracles are important right so the, what's the point there miracles are a signpost to point people to jesus right and if the signpost is pointing to you to your ministry to your banner something is wrong isn't it right are you with me so miracles have an effect a powerful effect on people especially on those who do not believe as well okay um let's move on um the fifth point is Jesus gave importance to miracles. Jesus gave importance to miracles. Okay. So it says here, let's go to John chapter 20 very quickly. John chapter 20, verse 30 and 31. John chapter 20, verse 30 and 31. It says, And truly, Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing you may have life in his name. Amen. So these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, that believing you may have life in his name. Uh, let's go to the next chapter. John chapter 21, verse 25. John chapter 21, verse 25, it says, And there are also other things that Jesus did, which if they were written one by one, I suppose that even the world itself could not contain the books that, that would be written. Wow. Okay. Um, so here are some more examples that the importance that Jesus gave for miracles. Okay. In John chapter 5, verse 31 to 36. Uh, John chapter 5, verse 31 to 36. What is the context here? Uh, you know, John the Baptist is asking, okay, he's telling his disciples, go and ask him, is he really the Christ? Do you remember that scenario? Right? Um, John the Baptist is in prison. He asks his disciples to go and ask Jesus, is he really the Christ? Um, and so Jesus' response is mentioned. Uh, what does Jesus say? Go and tell him what you see. What does he see? The blind see, the deaf hear, the lame men are walking. Isn't it? And so Jesus is using the miracles, the healing and deliverance of what was happening as a sign to go and tell John, he's like, hey, this is the answer to your question. And in that, you should know that I am the anointed one. That, that is the Christ. Yeah. Um, let's read. So when let's go to John chapter 10, guys. I want someone to read. John chapter 10, oh, there are four verses that I want you to read, okay? Someone loud and clear. John chapter 10, verse 24 and 25. 
and 37 and 38. Okay, loud and clear, someone please. Okay, so that's verse 24 and 25. Yeah, okay, so the the teachers of the law are asking, okay, hey, yo, listen. We don't have time for all these puzzles and all of that. If you're the Christ, just tell it plainly, black or white, yes or no. So what is Jesus' response there, Anand? What does verse 25 say? All the works I do in, in the Father's name. Okay, so what were the works? Hmm. Say properly, Dad. <laughs> okay, uh, what's 37 and 38? Someone, please. 37 and 38. One second. So 37, 39, it says, do not believe me unless I do the works of my father. Jesus. So look at the weight that Jesus is putting on, on the works that he is doing. He's saying, don't believe me unless I do the works of my father. He's not even saying my works. I mean, this. That's a short verse, isn't it? 37. It's relatively a short verse, but there's so much to unpack there. I mean, the humility of Jesus right there is he's a son of God, right? He, he can say, it's my works and whatnot. But then he's saying, don't believe me unless I do the works of my father. Right? I'm just reminded of that beautiful passage in Philippians chapter 2, where he, it says, he emptied himself. Right? He emptied himself. He, um, and then verse 38, let's go on. It says, but if I do them, that's a big, right? Mm -hmm. But if I do them, even though you do not believe me, believe the works. Wow. That you may know and understand that the Father is in me and I in the Father. Right? Um, so it's statements like this that made you know the Pharisees and the Sadducees wanted to kill Jesus. Right? It in their culture, right? In their culture, nobody spoke like this. Um, so one of the classic questions that our Muslim friends ask us is: uh, where did Jesus say that he is God? He is the Son of God. In those words. But in those days, in their culture, they always spoke like this in, in riddles. Right? And if especially if Jesus was quoting a scripture, right? It's called biblical alteration. Is if if Jesus was quoting a scripture from the old testament, he was not, he was telling, okay. Everybody in the classroom was smart enough to understand that okay, he is not exactly telling, talking about that verse. He's talking about the verse before and after. Are you with me? And so he always spoke, uh, you know, in in that kind of a language because that's how people spoke back then. Uh, you know, it's nobody was spoon fed, right? And so in saying that. Jesus is he's just making a heavy statement there. He says, if I do them, even though you do not believe me, believe the works that you may know and understand that the Father is in me and I in the Father. Amen? So Jesus gave a huge importance to the miracles. And so when you and I function and minister in healing and deliverance, uh, once again, we are just going back to that first point. We are revealing the nature of God. We are doing the works of the Father. 
and in doing that we are in the father and he is in us are you with me are you with me yeah awesome okay the sixth point we'll just do two more points and we'll uh, conclude for this uh, session okay miracles healing and deliverance uh, releases the kingdom of god in our midst okay a very famous message during the time of jesus and john the baptist was what five point message on how to overcome depression was it that what was i thank you <laughs> repent for the kingdom of god is near or at hand right that one point message or two lines message that's it repent for the kingdom of god is at hand it was all about the kingdom of god right okay students students okay that didn't, didn't sound right <laughs> all right guys so like it or not or believe it or not you and i okay you and i we are born into spiritual warfare understood you too you're very relaxed you're like yeah yeah it's a warfare it's so it's like i it's just like you know dosa and chutney for me it's... there is a enemy that wants to steal kill and destroy there is an enemy who hates you so much that he just doesn't want to steal your joy he just doesn't want to steal your happiness he wants to kill you he just doesn't want to kill you he wants to destroy you he wants to make it look like you never even existed understood he wants to make it look like you never even existed that is how much the devil hates you and me you and i are born into spiritual warfare so there is two kingdoms the kingdom of god and the kingdom of darkness that is at war for your soul are you with me right and so when we declare that the kingdom of god is here and we are creating an atmosphere for so here's the thing kingdom everybody say kingdom kingdom is two words king and dominion king and dominion right so when king comes when the king comes king never comes alone he always comes with his dominion right and so in his kingdom there is no shame there is no pain there are no tears isn't it there is no sickness there is no uh, a shadow of turning in him isn't it and so that is the kingdom of god and that's how jesus taught his disciples to pray isn't it let your kingdom come let your will be done right that is called heaven on earth guys so uh, sorry the kingdom comes with power the kingdom of god it comes with power and the same authority has been given unto us for us to declare that you know to release the kingdom of god uh, into this realm right and the last two points uh, very quickly is the gospel is to be preached with accompanying signs and wonders we are not just called to preach the gospel right the gospel that we are preached are supposed to be accompanied with signs and wonders everybody say signs and wonders say signs and wonders one more time okay so when when you are to preach the gospel wherever right whenever right uh it's supposed to be it's supposed to follow with signs and wonders and that's what we see in the ministry of jesus uh very quickly i let me read um from john chapter 3 verse 1 and 2 i'm just going to read that for us john chapter 3 verse 1 and 2 it says there was a man of the pharisees named nicodemus 
a ruler of the Jews. This man came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher come from God. Rabbi means teacher, isn't it? That means Jesus taught, he preached. Then he says, for no one can do these signs that you do unless God is with him. So Jesus taught, but he just didn't teach. He also performed signs, wonders, and miracles. Amen? Um, and once you get these notes, uh, you can read the rest of the uh, scriptures as well for us. And uh, the last point is miracles encourage people to believe for more. Miracle helps and encourages people to believe for more of the supernatural. Okay, um, just a couple of um, uh, scriptures for you for you to make a note of Matthew chapter twelve verse fifteen, Matthew twelve fifteen, Matthew fifteen thirty, Matthew nineteen verse two. Luke chapter 5 verse 15 and finally Luke chapter 9 verse 11. Luke chapter 5 verse 15 and Luke chapter 9 verse 11. Okay, oh, just one verse for us, uh, two verses. Matthew 15 30 it says, Then great multitudes came to him, having with them the lame, blind, mute, maimed, and many others, and they laid them down at Jesus' feet, and he healed them. Matthew chapter 19, verse 2, and great multitudes followed him, and he healed them there. Okay, you can read the other scriptures as well. So uh, let me, so let's just quick, quickly uh, recap the, all, all the eight points. What we just did is we went through Eight biblical reasons as to why miracles, signs, and wonders are important. First one, miracles and healing reveal the nature of God. It reveals God's greatness. Second point, it reveals and demonstrates God's compassion. First, uh, point four, it reveals, it has a powerful effect on people. Uh, and the importance Jesus gave for miracles is point five. And kingdom comes with power. And so we've been vested with that same kingdom power and authority. Gospel is to be preached with accompanying signs and wonders. And finally, miracles encourage people to believe for more of the supernatural. Amen? So uh, we'll pause here for this session. We'll take a break and uh, we'll continue. All right? Uh, see you all.